how are you guys doing? Pretty good? Mediocre? Hopefully a little better than mediocre. Uh, well, welcome to Catch the Fire Airport Campus this morning. This is a good Sunday. This is Baptism Sunday, people. So this is a really fantastic morning. I love baptisms. I love um, what God does um, as we go through that symbolic process of just being um, immersed in the water. The freedom that comes is so exciting. So baptismal people, is that the right word? Get ready for the Spirit of God to come on you in power this morning. Um, church family, I want to invite you up because you don't want to be watching from afar, but you want to be participating in this um, incredible event because we're a family and we support each other and cheer each other on. So we want to invite you, especially family of the baptism, the baptizing people. I just, I, I've not worked on my verbs for this. Family of the baptized, yet to be baptized, come forward because you want to take photos and shout encouraging things. Um, and so church family, I want to encourage you to stand. We're going to uh, start with a little bit of worship this morning. And, and then we're going to start the baptisms. And then we're going to just le- launch into a celebration of worship after that. So... Are you ready, people? Yes, I like it. Let's stand together and we're just going to pray and um, just welcome God's presence to come and speak to us this morning. Father, we love you. We love you. We love your presence and we invite you to come in power this morning. We want to glorify you. We want to love you. We want to worship you with all of our hearts and you know, if you've had an intense week, let's just take a moment and let, let that stuff go. Father, I let go of the stress and the turmoil and the questions, and I come ready to be present with you this morning, God. Present with you, Jesus. Heart engaged to give you my worship. We love you, Jesus. We give you our worship this morning.
Test, test. There we go. We have a baptism this morning. Woo! A water baptism. Those are great. And uh, we have, I think, five candidates to my knowledge. And so, you know, the scripture makes it clear that we give our hearts to Jesus, and that is fabulous. And we know that we're washed clean only by the blood of Jesus. But the scripture says, repent and be baptized, every one of you. Every one of you. And so, we recognize that when we're water baptized, we come to a place where the principalities and the powers of the heavenlies, the demons and the angels, and the people around about get to witness our declaration that from this day forward, we will follow Jesus Christ. We recognize the price that has been paid for us, and we are privileged to walk in agreement with that, giving our lives for the sake of the kingdom of God and for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The scripture declares that we are dead and our life is hidden with Christ in God. And so as these people are going to go down in the waters of baptism, they're going down, they're going under. We're believing the old man is dead and really even the demonic realities that are there that hinder and oppress us are going to stay dead in the bottom of this pool. And people are going to rise up with newness of life, fullness of the spirit. And so how many want to believe for that this morning? And so we're going to ask, going to get a brief introduction from the people here. We're going to ask the question, why do you want to be baptized today? So if you could give us your name, and uh, it's more than five, that's good. My counting is a little off today. I'm glad about that. But tell us your name and tell us why you want to be baptized today, please. Okay. Um, I'm Susie. <laughs> hey. And I want to be baptized so I can affirm that my identity is found in being a child of God and not anything else. My name's Alexandra, and I'm getting baptized just to commit myself to the Lord and say thank you, and I really just want to fully commit myself and just go in the opposite way and try to be more holy with the Lord. Thank you. I'm Maylin. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like in many ways I'm like the prodigal son. I'm just returning back home to my daddy, and I'm just ready to say, Dad, I'm home. Please just accept me. I love you so much. So, yeah. Hi, my name is Joan. I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, my personal Savior. And now I want more of Him, so I want to be baptized. Thank you. My name is Timothy. Uh, <laughs> I love Jesus, Jesus, and I want more Jesus. Good morning, I'm Dagmar. I'd like to be closer to God, improve my life, find healing, and enjoy this moment. That's so awesome, isn't it? And so each and every one of these people is going to go down in the waters of baptism in just a moment. And, you know, the old passes away, the new, all things become new. And so stretch out your hands to them now, will we? Father, we pray that as they all go into the waters of baptism, Lord, with Kenny and with Ruth, Ruth Preston, our pastor from Central, Lord, we pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We pray the fire of God to come upon them. We pray, Lord, for the fullness of your Spirit, lives transformed in the name of Jesus. And God, that as they come out, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you'd release your glory upon them, Father. Be newness of life manifested in each and every one of them in Jesus' name. And so what will happen is as they go in, we're going to baptize each and every one of you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And it's the beginning of something new and wonderful. I want to invite as well our ministry team to be able to come forward. We want to pray for you over on this side and pray for the fullness of the Spirit, lives fully transformed, set ablaze and on fire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to have our worship team continue to pray, but come and witness, come and cheer them on. Let's worship. 
And uh, let's go with the very first one. Come on down. Singing for all that you've done for me. 
all that you've done for me. Lord, all that you've done for me. Oh, you're amazing grace. You're amazing grace. And your grace is enough. Oh, your grace is enough. Oh, your grace is enough for me. Oh, your grace. Sing it out. Oh, your grace. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me.
for me. I declare today that your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Oh, oh, your grace is enough for me. It's enough for me. You're enough for me. Your grace is enough for me. Let's just take a second and just welcome His grace. Welcome His presence today. Let's lift our voices. 
let the name of Jesus be heard above all other names. Oh, let the name of Jesus be heard above all other names. Hey. Oh, let the name of Jesus. Jesus be heard above all other names. Our victorious King, we lift you high. Oh, let the name of Jesus be lifted above all other names. Oh, let the name of Jesus be heard above all other names. Let's sing, be lifted. Oh, be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. One more time, sing it out. Oh, be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, Lord. Be lifted high, be lifted high, higher and higher, for is just to lift him up to worship him. oh we give you all our worship oh we give you all our praise sing I will give you so good. 
You're so good. We worship you. We adore you in this place today.
that we get to gather together and do this as a family, that we can do this, hundreds of us together in here, lifting the name of Jesus high. Why don't we just give him a shout? I just feel like just celebrating who he is this morning. Welcome everybody. How are you guys doing? This is a good day to be alive. It's a good day to be part of the family of God. Um, if you want to take your seats, um, my name is Sarah Jackson. This is my gorgeous little daughter, River. And that man there is my ridiculously good-looking husband, Benjamin. And we are delighted to be uh, hosting uh, the meeting this morning and just welcoming you here to uh, our local church. Um, we have the pleasure of sharing the scintillating announcements with you. These could change your life forever. So just listen up because you don't know. T today could change the rest of your life. Um, ben and I have been leading Momentum, which is a young adult gathering here at airport for the last three years. And um, we are announcing a little bit of a change to momentum. Um, this summer, we, we had been praying with our leadership team, which was Mel and Jojo Rogato over there. Give them a wave, a shimmy, a smile. Look at those beautiful people. They're, they're really delightful. Um, Jonathan and Alice Clark and uh, Gordon and Kathy Harris and just saying, God, we just feel like there's, there's change coming. And um, what we unanimously really felt God speaking to us um, to uh, take a season where we stopped our uh, Monday night gatherings and started really focusing on discipleship, mentoring, and our connect groups. And so starting this fall, we're going to be really focusing on gathering in small groups in homes um, as the young adults here at, at airport. And so if you are a young adult, which, you know, 18 to... 40. You know, in there somewhere. Sorry, anyone who's 41. Disqualified. <laughs> Um, we are we're going to be looking to connect with you after the Sunday meeting on Sunday mornings and trying to connect you into some small groups because I think the heart cry of so many young adults is we want community. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes we can go and be part of a meeting and yet still be hidden. 
and not be known. And so we are seeking to just spend a season doing uh, small groups and connect groups uh, with, with the young adults here. And then we are going to be doing some uh, occasional Monday nights where we gather together in a bigger way. So just announcing that to you. And if you were like, what? I was going to be coming on Monday night. We'd love to connect with you afterwards or come and say hi to Mel and Jojo. Shimmy, shimmy, please. Okay, just a wave. Um, and so there it is. No more shimmying. Ben. Um, just to clarify, we won't be meeting on Monday nights. Did you just say that? I did. Okay, I cool. Did. I did say Great. that, but thank you for double clarifying. Oh, that's fine. Let me give another announcement, which I feel I need to put on a girly voice for, which is that there's a women's ministry starting this Wednesday, and it's going to be lovely. And... My beautiful wife will be speaking, and her and Patricia Bootsma are going to be leading it together. And it's really going to be fabulous and ladylike. We, we, wow, there's, there's no words for that, but I, what can I say? My husband, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like we lost our way in the announcements. But yes, Patricia and I are relaunching the women's ministry here. It's going to be once a month. Ladies, you can come out to once a month. Ben is going to be looking after River at home. Ladies, nudge your significant other and say, that night is going to be the night that you're going to be staying at home looking after the kids. And if you're like, but I don't have a significant other, I suggest driving to a good friend's house, putting your baby down to sleep at their house and saying, ha ha, I'm out the door in a, like a, you know, gentle and respectful tones. We are really excited about what this scene's going to bring with, um, with the, for the women here. And so, ladies, now's your time. I'm woggling my eyebrows at you, saying, come, let's gather. We're excited about what's coming next month. Evelyn is going to be sharing. Woohoo! Uh, if you've never met Evelyn, she is just such a feisty woman of God. She inspires me to just run after Jesus faster than I can already run. It's just like, ah, oh, you know, you can't help but be around Evelyn and just get on fire for Jesus. So women's ministry this Wednesday. Ladies, are you ready? I, I want to do a bit more girly shouting than that. Ladies, are you ready? Okay, that was good. Cool. Um, if you're new, we're not going to ask you to stand up. I don't want to embarrass you, but we would so love to meet you. We'd so love to connect with you. So we have a little card uh, in the back of the seat in front of you, which is called our connection card, I think. And um, it's just a way for us to find out what are you interested in? How can we connect with you? And uh, even if you are not new, even if you are here all the time, please write down some prayer requests on the back. Our team pray for them every week. I'm sure you've heard that by now. But we're serious about it. We want to pray for you and we want to connect with you. So fill in this card and also come and meet some of our team in the connection point, which is over there in the coffee shop right after the service. Some of the best coffee in this city. Uh, it is. It is good coffee. Well, we are about to take up our offering. So I would like to encourage you, um, if you've not already been uh, planned what you're giving to today, to take a moment and ask God, what can I give today? Um, our... Are these our stewardly people who are going to be handing around the buckets if you would like to come and be deployed? Is that the right word? Deploy, steward people. Um, and we are really wanting, as a church family, um, to live in generosity. It's one of the things God's been speaking to us about recently. And one of the things I've been looking, how can I live generously? How can I give? How can I give more than I've been giving before? Um, and that, that looks all sorts of varieties of ways. How can you bless people in life? But also, how can we give generously um, towards the local church and towards go what God is doing here? Yeah. So let's just take a moment and pray. Father, thank you for the blessing of finances. Thank you for the offering today. And Father, we choose to give generously out of the money that you have given to us. Father, thank you that you are our provider and we look to you for provision. Father, we receive your joy today and we choose to give out of joy. Amen. Uh, please make checks payable to catch the fire. If you'd like to give online, you can just do it off your phone or you can go out into the foyer and give with your debit card because that is good to give out of what you have. If you want to give online, it's my.catchthefire.com. My.catchthefire.com. 
There we go. Whilst you are giving, scribbling your checks, putting things in a little brown basket, let us watch the video announcements. Let oh. us watch. Thanks. We have to watch here. This it's video announcements, and we have some exciting things coming up this fall. And one of them is our annual Catch the Fire conference. And so we've been talking about this the last couple of weeks. And if you were here last Sunday, you saw that Benny Hinn had a great little greeting for us and was calling Pastor John Arnett Johnny and talking about his dog and all that kind of stuff. Well, we've got another talk from Benny Hinn inviting you to come to the Catch the Fire conference. Here's Benny. I'm looking forward to coming for Catch the Fire. It's going to be a magnificent time. I'm telling you. I feel it in my heart, in the Holy Ghost, it's in the Bible. I'm believing for notable signs and wonders to take place in those meetings. And let's believe for a tremendous, mighty, heavy anointing to hit all of us that we won't even be able to walk out of the building, all right? Let's believe that the glory of God will visit us to never, that we will never be the same again. At the Catch the Fire conference, we're expecting to have a lot of people, and for those of you that are part of our church family, there are three different ways for you to be able to come. Number one is that if you just like to come and register and sit in the seats and enjoy everything, you are very welcome to do that. Number two would be to volunteer to be helping in some of the behind the scenes roles, like greeters, like registration, like cleaning toilets, like helping the parking lot, all those kind of things. We need over 100 people at uh, every conference to be able to do those kind of things, 100 people a day to be able to do those kind of things. And the third way would be if you've ever been on the prayer ministry team and you'd like to help lay hands and minister to people at the sessions, morning, afternoon, or evening, then you need to send an email to my wife, Sandra, and she's Sandra Long at catchthefire.com. And uh, we'd like to have a large ministry team that's able to bless people and pray for people. And so we're expecti uh, expecting to have a great conference and a great time with uh, James Maloney, who many, many people see as the best person functioning in the gift of miracles, and then Benny Hinn, who most of you know and know his ministry. This week, you will have got an email, or hopefully you have got an email from us to just uh, give you an overview of some of the finances. You got a link to a video talk that Brian Stevenson, our executive director, and myself did. You got a link with some of the financial things. If you did not get that, could you please call our office or send us an email because it means that we don't have your email address. So it did, uh, just to let you know, it did go out, and if you didn't get us, contact us because we wanted to keep you informed where we're at. We've had some good reports. We have some big projects. We have some big needs as a church in terms of some things that are coming up, and so we want to make sure that everyone's on page, on the same page as us, just knowing where we're at. So thank you for that. Friends, every week we're showing you a little testimony of someone whose life has been transformed because of Catch the Fire, and here's someone from our central campus. Hi, I'm Stefan, and I'm one of the leaders at the Central Campus. Um, when I came here first, I was so insecure about myself, and I really didn't know the value that I had. And just the, from the moment on that I started coming here, God began to show me how valuable, valuable was, I was in his eyes, and just how precious he, find, he found me. And really, the leaders at Central and everyone that I... That I was hanging out with, they were just continually speaking life and speaking truth into me and, and just really accepting me for, for who I was. So ever since I've been here, my life has been transformed by people just really seeing with God's eyes and seeing the value that was inside of me. So my life has not been the same since I've come here. And I can truly say that I am loved and I'm very special in God's eyes. That's it for now, friends. All the things you need to know, they're on the screen right now. Thank you, Pastor Steve. Very good. Um, okay, we're excited about our speaker today, but before we do that, we have a couple, uh, Jeff and Kristen, who are going to be going to Israel, and I want our incredible um, SWAT team of prayer ministry intercessory people to come and gather down here. And Jeff and Kristen, if you want to come down here, we're excited about what they're going to do in Israel, and we want to be blessing them and just filling them up with the Holy Spirit before they go. Amen? So if you're on the prayer ministry team, please come and gather around this beautiful couple over here, and um, let's see them get filled up. Fantastic. Well, we are very excited this morning. Um, we have John Kirkby here with us and Helen Johnson um, from CAP, which is Christians Against Poverty. And as a Brit, you may not know about CAP, but I do, and I'm really thrilled that they are here um, because just getting out of 
debt, all those good things. It's, oh, you know what? Fa- finances bring us so much pressure in life. And um, since Ben and I got out of debt, we have family who did the CAP course back in the UK and were really transformed by it. And they were just calling us like, oh my goodness, it's so good. We can budget. We can tell our money what to do. Oh, you know, all these, you know, they were Skyping with us, telling us of the transformation they experienced in their lives. So without further ado, um, why don't we just welcome John um, Kirkby up here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to hear a correct accent. That's great. Hey, good morning. Um, Thank you so much for such a a warm welcome. Uh, First of all, um, I just want to say I am uh, really, truly, truly delighted and honoured to be here this morning. Um, You're going to hear my testimony, but I just want to say that um, if you could understand what your church has done um, over the last two decades... Um, I was saved just over 20 odd years ago, and the thing that God birthed in this church through John and Carol, that he spread around the world, kind of swept me up as a, as a baby Christian, and much of my sheer belief and faith that my God is a God who can do abundantly more than you or I could ever dream or imagine, and he is really real, and he really can make some differences, came through the ministry that swept through from this church. So give yourselves, please give yourselves a round of applause and an amazing sense of what God has done. Yay. Great. Um, Thank you again for the... uh, generosity of allowing me to speak on the work of Christians Against Poverty. We're actually launching uh, two of our first eight debt centers here um, in this particular campus and also in your Brampton campus. Um, I first of all want to maybe apologize a little bit. Um, I may be a little bit uh, slightly emotional, uh, a little bit more than normal this morning. Um, It's quite a moment for me personally. I flew out of the UK on Wednesday and I fly back this evening um, and I left my first daughter uh, two weeks of having my first grandchild. Um, It was always going to happen, wasn't it? Anyway, I am delighted to let you know that over the weekend I've become my first grandchild has been born. Yeah, Rosie, what a a blessing for us as a family. And hey, they're all doing well. Uh, Fantastic that God could do that. So this morning I'm going to tell you of the miracle of Christians Against Poverty. Uh, My own testimony over the last 20 odd years and also uh, Cap's story. Um, I will be sharing with you the amazing start that we've had here as we brought the ministry uh, to Canada, our vision to enable the church here in Canada to reach the society with the love of Jesus, with a way of relieving poverty and changing people's lives. And as you will see, our heart to see people come to know Jesus Christ as their personal saviour is weaved within the very DNA of who we are as an organisation. I'm going to give you all a chance to get involved in this thing as we uh, spread out here across Canada, not only supporting the local centres here, but also getting involved in our national vision for CAP Canada. So what's the heart behind this thing? Well, uh, as you will uh, probably no doubt uh, work out, as the person who has been given the privilege of founding Christians Against Poverty, my own testimony basically expresses really what Christians Against Poverty is all about and also what we do. Before I go any further, I just want to make sure um, I'm going to make no apology for being pretty overwhelmed by what my God has done in my life and what he's done through CAP. Is that okay? Great. Uh, Okay, 20 of you. I'll take the 20. It's fine, okay? But listen, seriously, anything of any sense of praiseworthiness, anything that's any good, any compassion within me, any con passion within the tens of thousands who work with us now across the world. It comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's the one who needs to receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Only by His grace can any of us, hey, be involved in what He's doing. And we need to make sure that He gets the glory and He gets the honor and He gets the praise. So my testimony. Uh, First of all, um, I'm not sure we've quite enough, but we should nearly have enough for everybody here to be given a free copy of my kind of testimony. Uh, This is my story and the history of Christians Against Poverty. And as you read in there, you'll hear of kind of my uh, early life. I was brought up in a very loving family. Uh, My uh, parents were amazing people. We weren't 
the poorest people in the nation, but we certainly weren't the wealthiest people. I was brought up in a relatively idyllic household. At the age of nine, my father became uh, seriously ill, and over the next 17 years, I had a, a very, very difficult time. Still to this day, I don't know what went wrong, but something inside me kind of broke. I was suffered from dyslexia, I was really struggling at school, I had an awful lot of anger within me as a young man, got involved in street violence to my ultimate shame of my beautiful parents. I left school at 15, a year earlier than I should, completely uneducated, very angry, broken young man. And then at 18, uh, my father died, and after my father died, my mother was sectioned under mental health. I remember the night the uh, kind of, yeah, the suits came and sat me down and said, we're taking your mum away. And they asked me how old I was. I was 18 years and four months old. And they just closed the file and left me. Um, yeah, that was the first time in my own life, really, that I felt some of the loneliness and brokenness that was to become, unfortunately, a part of some other parts of my life. But I also discovered, which I now give God the glory, that he had put something in me, some nevertheless spirit that would not roll over. I had to survive. I had one life. I was on my own. I had to get a job, a better job. By the way, it wasn't difficult to get a better job than the one I had because the one I had was putting lids on paintings with a mallet. Okay, so if you think you've got a bad job, trust me, you're doing great, I assure you. So I got a job. I took a job as a door-to-door -door loan uh, salesman and collector in some of the most uh, difficult areas of my home city. And I began to build and grow and be, as the world would say, successful in the consumer finance industry. I had an amazing 13-year career. I went from the very bottom of the finance industry. I worked my way all the way through. I ended up being part of a team of people who would build UK finance companies. I earned significant amounts of money, big bonuses, big car, married, two children, everything that the world says would make you be successful. But the truth was, and I th still remains to a certain extent, um, I was really broken inside. I lived very poorly. I didn't manage my money very well. I wasn't the best husband I could have been to my first wife. Um, my daughter told me not to say this, but it is true. I wasn't the best father I could have been to my two young daughters at the time. My life was built on sand. And as you sow, so shall you reap. And this is really where Christians Against Poverty started, some 22 years ago now. I lost my home, I lost my first marriage, I realised I had no friends. I was hounded by debt collectors, I was completely broken inside as a person. I was lonely and very afraid. I'll read this from my book, which I think sums it up. As I look out of my, my book, by the way, is based on uh, my diary that was just printed. And 160,000 copies have gone around the world, which is not bad for a dyslexic who left school at 15. God's got a, a sense of humor. Amen. <laughs> As I look out of the window and see my girls playing in their garden, knowing in my heart that their parents' marriage is over, and I had lost them their home, I felt so guilty, so ashamed I'd had so much and blown the lot. Over the next year, I gradually fell apart. I used to look after my two little girls, Jasmine, who's seven, and Jessica, four, alternate weekends, and I lived in just one room. When the girls stayed with me, I used to use two camp beds in that small room. I would often cry over them. The word destitute is often overused, that's, that's what I became. Utterly avoid, devoid of any spirit, hurting, lonely, and afraid. You're going to hear of a, of a miracle of what God has done through Christians Against Poverty around the world. But this picture is where Christians Against Poverty started. This is a picture. I don't know where I'm looking for pictures. Where I'm looking for pictures. The picture's there. It's a picture of a bed sit. That's it. So there you go. So my bed is on the right. Those are the two camp beds. Those are my two little girls. That's our wardrobe. And there's a little bag in the corner. And that was my life. I always managed to feed my girls, but it was day to day, and yeah, 
in the midst of all that, in that brokenness, were my two beautiful little children. If you can put the next picture up. Um, this is Jasmine. Um, she was just nine at the time. The truth is, she grew, up, she grew up too young. She really helped me. I was so ashamed. I, I, I was buying food every day. She would sometimes go into the shops and buy the few slices of ham and a few bread rolls. My two daughters, we were so poor, they stopped asking me for anything because they knew I couldn't give them anything. Yeah. And then the next picture, this is a little bit lighter. Okay, this is little Jessica. Um, she just thought she was camping out with her dad, so, we'll, you know, we can... God's grace is sufficient. But in the midst of this, in the midst of this, I found my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I met a bunch of Christians who weren't willing to just sit back and do nothing when they saw broken people in their communities. They reached out to me. They invited me to a barbecue. Uh, by the way, I went anywhere where food was included, I assure you. I was like, yes, I'll go. And I realized it was the love of God within them, a compassion for this broken guy who lost everything, who had nothing to give. I, had, I was nothing to give. And hey, his love, his forgiveness flooded into my life, and I began to live a different life. It's interesting this morning, um, the five people who were baptized, I'd, actually in my book there's a picture of my baptism picture. And I just wanted to say to everybody, or particularly those five young people, um, I only knew that amount of my life when I ba got baptized. I did not know what God was going to do with me and my life. And I pray that you also will find God do some reckless things with your life. And great to have you <laughs> baptized and with us. I was the first ever Christians Against Poverty client. I simply used the understanding that I have of the finance industry to apply to my own circumstances. I set up budgets and payment plans. I contacted creditors. I got interest reduced and stopped. I started to live within my means. Hey, um, I was probably one of the worst baby Christians that you can imagine. I was still all over the place, okay? Uh, I was still struggling a little bit with alcohol. Um, I was in some poor relationships. I wasn't what I wanted to be, but I knew a God who knew what I could be. And he stood with me and I came through. And I have, for me, the, the memories of what God did in my life. And hey, I'm going to tell you a testimony, but here's the truth. If this was all I could say to you, it'd be enough for me until the day I go to glory. I remember the first night, my two little girls had their own bedroom to sleep in. I remember when I could go to sleep without a fear of people knocking on my door demanding money off me. I remember being able to open the mail. I remember the first card I got that wasn't asking me for money. I remember the first supermarket when I could afford my girls to buy some sweets. And I remember the first meal I cooked for friends that I could afford to pay for myself. I am a living testimony of a God who no one is beyond his love. Amen? Having God in my life, his consistent forgiveness and grace began to do a work in me. I began to change slowly. And as my wife tells me, it's still a work in progress. <laughs> got my job back on. Got my home. Began to pay my debts off. Got involved in church. Totally transformed. And then in 1996, uh, I was uh, 13 weeks off getting married to my beautiful wife, Lizzie. We were... Yeah, I was, by the way, you know, you talk about the eligible bachelor list. I don't know if you have one in Canada. Well, I was the uneligible bachelor list, you know. Um, yeah, I always laughed. She was waiting for a, a knight in shining armor to ride into her life. And along came an old bloke on a donkey with two little followers. So be careful, ladies, what you pray. So in 1996, we started Christians Against Poverty, me and my wife. We started it with uh, 10 pounds, which uh, I believe is about 5,000 Canadian dollars. Great. I love your currency. And we began an 18-year journey. Went out onto the streets of my hometown and began to reach the poor and needy. I saw women about to sell themselves on the street. I saw fathers broken to suicide, unable to feed their children. I saw people having their homes repossessed. But I also saw the power of the church able to reach people, 
to show them that Jesus actually does care about them, to stand between them and their creditors, to stop repossessions, to go to court, to rearrange things, to give people a hope, to pray with them, marriages held together, children getting fed, couples coming together. And I also began to see people find Jesus Christ as their personal saviour, leading people to Christ in their kitchens, in our own home. We had every client through for a meal, me and Lizzie, leading them to Christ, showing him the love of Jesus Christ, and then drawing them into a church where his spirit could get hold of them, where his word could change them, where the people around them could disciple and build community. I saw, where no one else saw, what God had done through this bloke and bloke in a bedsit with two kids he couldn't feed, with a wife who believed him and a few pounds. I saw it with my own eyes. And I decided, with God, uh, slightly reluctantly at first, <laughs> that we would go and see what we could do. So we began the journey. Um, you're going to all want to cheer an awful lot during this list. We'll wait to the end and we'll do one big one. Is that okay? So this is Christians Against Poverty in the UK. First of all, CAP is now a, a nationally recognized Christian ministry, uh, recipients of many, many awards. We're the winners of the Sunday Times Best UK Charity to Work For uh, three times. And we've also, with my CEO and management team, have won the UK uh, Leadership Team of the Year um, for five occasions. We have moved on from the video that you're going to see in terms of scale. So here is CAP in the UK. We have 280 debt centres. We, have, we help 28,000 people every year. 13 families are currently being helped across the UK. Um, we have over 270 staff at our head office and 700 workers, just approaching 1,000 people working for CAP in the UK. And more importantly than that, this we have seen literally thousands and thousands of people become debt free. Two and a half thousand people went debt free this last year alone. But more importantly than that, every 23 minutes, a church working with Christians Against Poverty walks into a home of someone whose life is devastated by debt and poverty, just like mine was 18 years ago, every 23 minutes. My God is amazing God. And above and beyond all that, we are indeed Christians Against Poverty. We've seen over 5,000 people find Christ as their personal saviour, and every day somewhere around the world, five people yield to the love of God through the work of Christians Against Poverty. Praise <laughs> God. Our Cap Money Education Programme, which was wonderfully introduced, great advert for that. This is a three-week course that we run. Um, we are now the largest providers of adult financial education in the UK. We have 1,200 Cap Money Education Centres, 5,000 trained money coaches, working with tens of thousands of people, bringing God's finances in the church, through the church, into the community to change our nation through financial education. We're also grown in Australia. We have a massive team in Australia and also in New Zealand. Uh, in fact, in New Zealand, they're actually slightly ahead of the UK uh, in terms of their national vision, although I'm going there in November and I intend to slow them down because they're not beating me. <laughs> in Australia, New Zealand and the UK and now in Canada, we have a vision to change the nations that we're in. We're not here to do a few debt centres, although of course you start with a few debt centres. Our vision in Australia, New Zealand and the UK is to see a cap debt centre in every town and city. And also in the UK we have job creation, we have cap job clubs and cap release groups working with people with addictions and also working with people to find jobs. Our vision, as outrageous as it is, is from God and if you can go from a broken bloke in a bed sit with two kids you can't feed to seeing thousands of people every month and every day people finding Christ, and hundreds of churches joining us every month around the world, do you not dare underestimate what God can do? We have an outrageous vision. Praise God for that. If somebody asked me to sum up what we do and why we do it, I would be drawn to, for me, it is a life application scripture in Matthew 25. I really love this scripture. Um, I'm not a theologian, as you probably gather, and you don't, need to you don't need to translate this into Greek, okay? It's straight down the barrel. It's not my words. These are his words. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger. You invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. 
Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Christians Against Poverty is a 21st century embodiment of Matthew 25. We work with uh, the poorest and the needy in your society and our society. We do not pay people's debts off. We stand between them and their creditors. We make sure they prioritize their rent or their mortgage. We make sure that there's enough money in their budget to feed and clothe their children. And then we take what's left and we negotiate repayment plans with their creditors. And again, we found, again, here in Canada, the credit industry so willing to work with an organization that clearly has a heart for poor people to help people become debt-free. It is amazing um, what God has done here already in Canada. Uh, we arrived um, 18 months ago now. Uh, Helen, our CEO here, uh, had worked with me for eight years and she arrived. And basically, we had absolutely nothing. So the only way was up. <laughs> Amen? If you've got nothing, you can't really go anywhere but up. Hey, the UK, we invested 100,000 Canadian dollars in this. We really believed that God had called us to come to your nation, uh, which got us off to a good start. And we have had the most amazing, miraculous start here in Canada. We already have 60 cap money education centres sat up and working around this, the Toronto area. 60 churches already working with us. Yeah. We already have, with your two new centres that are opening next week, eight cap debt centres already operating here. We've already seen 100 clients. So they're already going get debt free and they're already finding Jesus Christ as their personal saviour. This thing works, praise God. And he's here now in Canada. Yeah. You just clap. You're just great. You just clap loads. I love it. It's like, what? It's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I do appreciate the, the encouragement. And also, I just get that sense. You know, you're talking about generosity. You know, in Proverbs, in the message version, which is written for people like me, it says the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Not just larger in finances, but larger in life. And when I meet people and organizations and ministries that are large, I don't need to check what's at the root of that. It'll be, generous, it'll be generosity. It just is. I've never met anybody who lives a large life in God. Not just large, please, financially. I mean large in God, with good families, with great joy in their heart, with a future and a hope, that lives are larger, that are growing in influence and future. There could be 85, 25, 15, 62, who knows what their ages are, but their, their lives are getting larger, and I can tell you without any hesitation, they will have generosity at the core of who they are. It will not be about them. Amen? Sorry, I'll start, start preaching then. Sorry, I just came out. I'm sorry. Sorry, I realized I'll just let, let's just let that out, okay? So if your life's getting smaller and smaller, you're stingy. No, no. Seriously. You know, if your life is like caving in and it's all getting smaller and smaller, not difficultly, hey, that's not a sign of generosity, having, a, you know, having an easy life. Man, generous people have difficult lives, trust me. But if it's closing in on you and it's getting all about you, hey, go start being generous in your heart towards people, in your sense to helping others, in not asking what this church can give you, but what can you give the church. Go volunteer for this conference. Go start being generous and your life will get bigger. Amen? Amen. Christians Against Poverty is about individual people. Hear me. We're not here to build a national organization across Canada with 200 debt centers and 1,000 money education centers. We will do that. We're not here just to build something that's going to be an example of the church here in this nation being relevant in the 21st century, although we will do that. We're doing this for people that Jesus Christ died on the cross for, people who need you to go and tell them that he cares for them, to show them that they have value and worth. That lovely testimony from that guy there talking about you know, self-esteem. Trust me, you want to go and see the people we meet, where their self-esteem is. 40% of them are suicidal when we get there. We've only lost three of 70,000 clients to suicide since I started. I've mourned and prayed over those three. Sorry, don't clap. No. I've mourned and prayed over each of those three 
that we couldn't quite draw back. But there would have been 20,000 of the people we've seen who were suicide, suicidal. Over 15,000 would have previously attempted suicide. This thing changes lives. There are thousands of dead people walking with children who have got parents, wives who've got husbands, brothers and sisters, because the church was not willing to do nothing when it could do something. And all we're about is empowering the church to be what you want to be anyway. Just reading and hearing of this kind of wonderful prophetic encouragement you've had to go even further with your heart for the community here in Greater Toronto fills my heart with great excitement for you as a movement and as a church that God is saying, come on, Let's get out there. Let's do this thing. To add to all the amazing things that you already do, I just think, yes, God, come on. Come on, God. It's not over yet, amen. It's not over yet. So at the end of this day, this thing is about people. I'm just going to pop up um, my family photo. Uh, This is a recent family photo. So when I look at this photo, this is for me, by the way, not for you. All right, I'm going home. So when I look at this photo, um, there's my beautiful wife Lizzie just next to me. Uh, there's Jasmine, my eldest, who is now a mother, with Sai, her son. Uh, Jasmine has worked for CAP for eight years, driving, Christian, uh, driving CAP money across the UK and around the world. And there's Jessica, that little, the other little who thought she was camping out. Okay, she's now a midwife and she was with her sister as birth partner. And she, the new, her new daughter carries her name, Rosie. And then there's her, her partner. And there's Abigail. And there's my, my son, Tom. And there's Lydia. Listen, don't you ever put anybody behind the love of, beyond the love of Jesus Christ. Don't you ever put anybody beyond what the church can do with Jesus at the core. Don't ever think by, or see what you think. If you'd have looked at me in that bed seat with those two kids, the world had written me off. Everyone had abandoned me. But God never did. And neither did Christians. They believed in me. They stuck with me. Even though I was, it was difficult. And if God can do that with my family, he can do that with thousands of family and can do it with yours. Let's not underestimate, amen, what God can do with a bunch of ordinary people in a church that believe in God's calling to reach their community. Amen. Amen. Just going to pop a quick DVD on. I'm nearly finished. Um, This is... uh, the re- I'll explain why I'm showing this one. It's not our absolute current DVD from the UK. Um, but when I saw it, uh, when we were looking through, I actually thought, I think this tells you what we're all about. And this spirit is now in Canada. Let's watch this screens and then we'll, uh, we'll draw to a close. is always shouting at my mum. My mum keeps on telling me she's worried about money. Every time someone knocks at the door, I'm scared. My mum makes me open the door and tell them she's not in. Some days I can't go to school because I don't have the uniform. I know mum finds it hard to feed us, so I look in bins behind the shops or steal food and give it to mum. As an adult, I carried on what I'd learnt as a child. I was in debt and I resorted to crime and prostitution to make ends meet. When I called Cap for help, I was seriously depressed and suicidal. I hadn't been out of the house for 15 months and I was reliant upon alcohol to numb the pain. When Nick and Anne from CAP came, they came into my home. It was amazing because I was so depressed and suicidal and all thinking about going back to my old life. And they started praying for me and showing me the way to get out of debt. I started to feel God come back into my life. Matt 
and Nick told me that I had to put my debts in an envelope, unopened, and send them off to the cap office. I couldn't believe it, because no one ever, I'm 50, and no one has ever helped me with my debts. It's like a side of the father heart of God that I'd never seen before, and it was the father that I'd wanted all my life. What was good but was very hard was to stick to the budget that they'd set for me for two years. If you want to get out of debt, you've got to do what they tell you and stick to it and be disciplined, and it's worth it in the long run to become debt-free. Becoming debt-free through CAP and the support and love they've shown me and given me has totally liberated my life, and I'm free to go forward into my future without them ball and chain around my feet anymore. Yeah, praise God. And already there are uh, Canadian testimonies of lives already transformed by the work that CAP are doing. And we're going to do this in your church. Uh, we're training Margaret next week along with our uh, latest four debt centres. And we're looking for people to step forward to get involved in this campus, but also in the uh, Brampton. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Just learning loads of names. Uh, Brampton campus. Maybe a couple of people in each of those campuses who really have got a heart to go out there uh, trained and supported by Christians Against Poverty with all our backup to go and help people with their finances, but also a group of support workers, as me and my wife are, going out and just meeting people, taking them for a coffee. Uh, the kind of people who bring people to church, who have got a heart to share their love and compassion for others. Uh, we need you. Amen. So if you fancy getting your life to be a bit larger and larger, maybe a little bit of generosity of finding an odd evening now and again to go and reach people, we can do that. Um, doors are open for Christians Against Poverty. People ring our free phone number. They make appointments for us to go in. They then share with us all their problems and we give them a solution and then we ask to pray. Yeah, that's a pretty good opening for being an evangelist, isn't it? And that's what it is. It's like an arrowhead that just pierces into these people's homes by invitation with an answer uh, that can change people's lives. The reason why that uh, DVD is uh, particularly uh, moving for me and I chose to show it this morning was that the little girl who is in that DVD, um, obviously doing a DVD that's going to be shown around the world to hundreds of thousands of people, you have, to be, you have to be right about it. And me and Lizzie felt that it was really right that our youngest daughter, Lydia, would, would do the DVD. So that's Lydia, my youngest daughter. And it wasn't actually until the first time I saw it. Um, you know, when God just kind of catches you sometimes, um, you may not be able to see it, but... I think we've got a picture of uh, Jasmine again, if we can pop that picture back up again. No, the other one, just go back another, okay. Okay, there, that's great, thank you. Um, Jasmine is the same age there as Lydia was when she did the DVD. And my daughter also answered the phone and said her dad wasn't in. You know, these are real people who we're reaching who just have nothing and no hope and no future, and these kids are wrapped up with this. But if we can get the finances of their parents working and we can get enough money to prioritise food and we can get them on a repayment plan and get them debt free, we can hold those managers together. We can show that family that there is a future and there is a hope. This thing is about generations. It is about the longevity. And hey, it's going to take us, I don't know, 10, 15 years to see our vision here in Canada be completed and People who know me say I'll never complete any vision because I always get another one before the first one ends. So we'll, we'll just go on until the last moment maybe, you know. But people are worth it. People are worth years and years. People are worth it. Amen. They are worth it. <laughs> Praise God. And the final picture, to just completely finish me off, is the generations moving on. There she is. Rosie Liana. My granddaughter, five years of, of waiting, um, several lost, yeah, a true miracle of God. And that gorgeous little child has been born into a family, um, parents are walking with God. His parents are walking with God. In fact, it was almost an arranged marriage, really, but they're walking with God, they're our friends. <laughs> Rosie has got the best chance of a great life. 
Because 22 and a half years ago, when I was in a bed seat, Jesus Christ came into my life. And it is that generational excitement that really fills me. Hey, would I have preferred to have been at home this weekend to welcome my first grandchild? Yeah. But you know what? As I said, as my daughter and son-in-law said to me as I was coming, at the end of the day, what's really important is you'll have a lifetime with your granddaughter. But seeing Cap begin to expand to get a bridgehead and to push through into Canada is worth it. None of us actually thought we'd have to do it, but we did it hoping it'd be okay. But there you go. So it's for the roses, the unborn, the families that we don't know, that I am here, that I'm passionate. I'm determined as I've been in Australia, New Zealand and the UK and now in Canada to do everything I personally can do to see this ministry expand. At the end of the day, I can only do what I can do. I will do it faithfully. I am committed, me and my wife. Once we commit, we're in. We're in for the life. We're in for the, however long it takes. And I do, do believe that in 10 or 15 years, maybe I might have the privilege of standing here on that occasion. And we'll celebrate 200 debt centers. We'll celebrate 1,000 money education centers. We'll celebrate thousands of people who found Christ. Yeah. And this will be the place that this thing really got kind of birthed and released across Canada. So that is my heart. So as I come to a close, um, first of all, um, if you don't want a free copy of Nevertheless, okay, please don't get one. Is that okay? Yeah, seriously, I, I don't actually think we've got enough. We haven't. So if you don't want one, don't get one. It's fine. I will, you know, I'll be quite happy when you walk past me. It's okay, I'll survive. But if you want to read of a life transformed by the Spirit of God and read us something that's gone from a little office with 10 pounds to an international ministry reaching tens of thousands. This book is for you. Do not stop halfway through this book. This is raw. This is my diary. I express what it's like when me and Lizzie didn't have enough to feed ourselves. I express what it's like when we actually had our home. We lost our home early on in the ministry. It expresses. It's, it's real and raw. But it's amazing. And it's God's story. And we're delighted to give this, give this away to you to, be read, to read and encouraged. If you want a copy of Nevertheless, it's really easy. On your seats, you will have been given a, a, um, like a little card like this where you need to put your name and address and your contact details. Um, just so you can understand that, um, make it really easy. Um, if you don't want us to keep you updated with the work of Christians Against Poverty, okay, just don't get a book. Is that all right? Just don't fill it in. Okay, so it goes like this. Filled in with your name and address, free book. Yeah. Not filled in, no book. Everybody okay with that? So just your name and address so that we can keep in touch with you. This book is free, okay? But we want to connect with you. We want to let you watch this vision unfold in the years to come. Just your name and address details so we can keep in touch with you. And then you can get your free copy of Nevertheless and be inspired by what God's done. Is everybody okay with that? And also, I would like to say to anybody, first of all, if you are not tithing and you are not generous into this church and you are not willing to respond to the needs of this church, we do not want one dollar of your money. Amen? The church, this place, this is the place where your tithe and your first offerings should be given. Amen? That's your home. So if you're not doing that, please don't give us any money, okay? But if you are, and you're generously tithing into this church, and you want to help us across Canada, and here in these two centres, to see CAP expand around Canada, hey, we'd love to give you that opportunity. At the bottom of the form, all you need to do, just put your name, your address, there's a visa card details there. Um, I think the average giving is about $25 a month here in Canada. We've got 200 people already doing it. It's amazing. Hey, if the urge overtakes, you don't fight the urge. But listen, every dollar counts. If you can give a dollar a week, $5 a month, you know what? We'll take every dollar. We'll use it for good. We'll see lives changed. And you will be able to say that you were one of the first people to go, I'm all in. I don't really get it, but I'm all in and I'm going to get behind this thing. And we'd be absolutely blessed if you would do that. So thank you so much for the privilege of speaking here. I'd just like to pray over you as a church and then I'm finished. Father, I just want to thank you for personally the privilege of being able to speak here uh, this morning. Father, what you've done in my own life, just singing those songs this morning, I give you the glory and the honor. You're an amazing God. Father, I lift up this church. I lift John and Carol as the leaders of this church, spiritually and physically. Father, will you bless them? Will you encourage them? Will you send them all they need? Will you give them every opportunity that you've got for them? Will you let them know how much you delight over them? Will you give them a little bit of a glimpse of what they've done 
around the world over the last 20 odd years. And Father, I just pray for everybody in the building right now. Father, anybody who is needy, anybody who is struggling, anybody who's financially challenged, anybody who needs a miracle from you, Father, I pray that your spirit would be in this place. And for the lives that we're going to reach through these two debt centers and the lives that are going to be helped through our cap money, Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Let's go and change this neighborhood and this nation. Amen. Awesome, John. Thank you. Thank you, John Kirkby and Christians Against Poverty. And John, just a little bit of Canadian ease here. This is called a pulpit. And uh, we do preach from pulpits, John. So you're allowed to preach if you wanted to. Okay, it's allowed here. Um, I want to say, too, that uh, they do have a booth out in the front lobby. If you want to go and talk to them, get some more information, they're available for that. A couple of weeks ago, I was able to share with you about injustice, and I want to say that poverty is an injustice. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. The Lord really despises poverty. You know, when, when we as the church, if there's any poverty even within the church, it doesn't look good on the kingdom of God, does it? We shared about that, and so I believe one of, the, one of the heart, you know, something that's on God's heart, it's a heartbeat of his, is to eradicate poverty. I grew up in a degree of poverty, probably not to the degree that you're speaking of, John, but I, sometimes we can even gain a spirit of poverty in the way we think, our mindset. You know, God wants to be able to break us from that, even your ability to dream, even your ability to think God's thoughts, to be able to, to envision for the sake of the kingdom of God where he wants to take us. You know, I know that this, the scripture makes it clear. Jesus declared that the Father is looking for fruit that lasts. If I were to ask you, how fruitful is your life? What would you be able to respond to me? And how fruitful are you being? I, I'm not saying that we need to have everybody here getting involved in addressing the poverty issues, but I do think some of us would probably be very well equipped and able to be able to step out and reach people based on the platform of addressing poverty. And, you know, for your sake, for my sake, for the sake of the kingdom of God, it'd be my desire for you and yours that we can bear fruit that lasts for all of eternity. Wouldn't it be great to see souls coming into the kingdom of God because of using something that the enemy meant for evil, but the Lord will turn it for good because we access them based on the place of lack, but we show them our God who is a God of abundance. He's not just the God of not enough. He's not the God of not enough. He's not even the God of just enough, although I think some of us have that representation, you know, that he's the God of just enough, but he is the God of abundance. Because when I read the scriptures, he's the God that when he moves, he moves in big ways. Anybody here in 1994? You know, that was, a, that was an abundance. That was an outpouring that was like, whoa. And I am fully expecting this God of abundance to continue to move in our lives. And he wants people like you and I. He's looking for willing hearts. And so I want to encourage you that if this is something that's on your heart, you know, if you feel like you need more fruitfulness in your life and realize that you've got a testimony and you've got a heart that is evangelistic in nature, that you can begin to talk to people about Jesus using the platform of even lack and financial need and de indebtedness to be able to break that power, I believe it's going to be a powerful thing that will, will, will cause fruitfulness in the kingdom of heaven forever and ever. Furthermore, sometimes the best way to address things in our own lives is to give away. You know, some, I remember John Arna, you, you declared many times, you know the best way to keep what the Lord has poured out to us? You give it away. If you don't, if you don't give away what you've got, you know, it starts to shrink and we, we end up losing what we have. So, Anyway, go and be blessed. Let's stand right now. Can I have the worship team come forward? And uh, I want to extend an invitation for anybody here that hasn't personally received the revelation of the love of Jesus Christ for your own life. If you haven't made a decision to receive Jesus, you know, we heard a powerful testimony of one man who in his brokenness and in his weakness had somebody introduce Jesus to him. And that's what revolutionized his life. One of the, one of the, the, uh, the outworkings of knowing Jesus, one of the attributes of that was he's, he took him out of poverty. But it's, it's recognizing that we need a Savior. We have one man that died for all of mankind so that all of mankind in our poverty and in our sin could be set free into the, into the glory of the sons of God. And so I want to extend an invitation. If you have a desire here today to give your life to Jesus, if you realize that that need exists, I would encourage you to come to the front because we want to pray with you. We want to introduce you to the one who loved you so much that he gave his one and only son so that you could be reconciled to him, that you could walk in the abundance and the fullness of life. Is there anybody here that would like to make that decision this morning, this afternoon? You're ready to give your life to Jesus? 
You're saying, yeah, this is for me. I, I, I know that I'm missing something that is so key and so crucial, and I'm ready to come in and join the family of God. I'm ready to believe that this great big God that you're talking about is big enough to meet me in the place of my need. I want to encourage you to make your way to the front, and we'd love to pray for you. I also want to invite Helen, who just disappeared. Where did Helen go? Let's all go to the women's washroom. We're going to meet Helen, who is the... <laughs> Helen, Helen oversees the Canadian chapter of Christians Against Poverty. She's based in the Golden Horseshoe in the Hamilton, Burlington area. And, um, you know, I would, she'll be at the front desk if we dismiss before she gets back. And, uh, but Helen, you know, I met with Helen a couple months ago and really got a download on the vision of this. Any Brit, by the way, you think it's like the Britain day here at the front today, didn't you? You got Ben and Sarah leading. We got John here. But any Brit, anybody from the UK I talk to, they're aware of Christians Against Poverty. They speak so highly of this organization and its ability to, to reach into lives and to transform lives. And that's what we want to do is we want to transform lives. But uh, Helen is an incredible person to be able to meet. She's just an extension of the DNA of what we heard this morning from John. And, uh, you know, if, if she gets out, we'll let her say hi and introduce herself. But why don't you just lift your hands up. Say, Father, may the Lord bless each and every one of us. May, Lord, would you keep us? Would you make your face to shine upon us? Would you lift up your countenance upon us, God, and give us peace? Would you reach that shalom of your spirit, God, that even as we go from this place, Lord, that wherever we lay the soles of our feet, we realize that we are ambassadors of reconciliation, that we would have the anointing and the grace to reconcile men and women that are caught in the trap and in the prison of poverty and in black to be able to reach out and to see them one to the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills the one who is the god of abundance and so pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us father as we go from this place into our families into our homes into our neighborhoods into our workplaces father release an anointing to break heavy yokes, to break the back of poverty wherever we go. And even where we ourselves still walk in aspects of poverty, let it be broken as we go, as we release the good news, as we see the kingdom of heaven come in advance. Lord, break the back of poverty in our own lives. And all God's people said, amen. Well, we dismiss you now. Go in the grace of God. If you'd like to receive prayer for anything, we welcome you to come even to the front and if your prayer specifically is for uh, to give your life to Jesus to, to become a son or a daughter in the kingdom of heaven to have an eternal security that you know that you know that when your time comes to an end on the earth that you will be with him forever in heaven I urge you don't leave this place unless you need that revelation and uh, John and Helen will be at the back table and uh, they'll be they'll be happy to answer any questions you have. God bless you.